find out at an early age if they have a curve or not. Because if they have a curve, we want to be able to uh, to evaluate it, to judge it, to decide how big it is, and then start to brace them, start to treat them if necessary. Uh, sometimes we'll see people who have never had any treatment, and they come in with a fairly large scoliosis. At that point, sometimes the only option is surgery. So we don't want that. We want to be able to see them ahead of time and hopefully be able to treat them. Usually the best treatment if they have a true scoliosis, and that's a curve that's around 20, 25 degrees or, or more, is that we'll brace them. And the brace well, the, the most uh, pr uh, common sign is to see a difference in the waistline. If you look at someone's back and one side shift to the other, the other. The second most common is the shoulder, one shoulder blade will look like it's back further than the other. So instead of having a nice symmetric back, you get a little, little rotation. In fact, a true uh, scoliosis has a rotation. As I said during my presentation, if they have a, if my hands are on a rib cage, not just a side to side bend, but there's a rotation. So one half of the rib cage will go forward, the other half goes backwards. And I'll get a rib prominence. And a lot of people call it a uh, rib, rib hump, is what, you know, uh, but it's really just a prominence, a rotation of the ribs. The, the age difference, about 75 to 80% are girls versus boys. Again, we don't know why. It's uh, idiopathic scoliosis means we don't know the exact cause of it. But uh, it's, we see it much more common in girls. Probably has something to do with they hit that growth spurt earlier or younger than boys do. Okay. But there's a strong suggestion it's in the genes, it's in the families. We'll see some families where two sisters have a scoliosis, mother had a scoliosis, aunt has a scoliosis. You assume it's in the genetics there. And there's been some identical twin studies that show that there's a, a genetic connection. Now, some of the more recent push now in, in studies is to try to look at the human genome and try to figure out which patients are going to develop scoliosis. And one such test, the most recent one, is something called Scoli Score. Scoli Score is uh, done through a spit test. Actually, the girls will spit into a little cup. We mail it out to the company, and most insurances will cover this. And this gives us some kind of a range as to uh, what the risk is for the scoliosis of that child. Uh, it's usually done for very small curves, 10 to 25 degrees, but again, I can tell the parents then, is it more likely to progress or less likely to progress? A lot of them fall right in the mid zone, doesn't help us too much, I still need to watch them and observe them, but there is some prognosis if it's on either end of that spectrum. Well, most of the treatment for scoliosis is based on uh, a surgical treatment. And probably the, uh, the greatest advancement, even though we're still using rods and screws, uh, is, is how much correction we can get and how safe we can do it. So the combination of neurologic monitoring and the type of instrumentation we can use makes it a, a very powerful tool to get excellent correction with little risk to the patient. So you can simply do this test that we talked about today, just looking at, having, looking at their shoulders, looking at their back and having them bend forward to look for that rib prominence on one side versus the other, and then bringing up to their pediatrician saying, hey, I, I'm worried that my daughter or son has scoliosis, can you take a look? And then if there's a concern, they'll do an x-ray. If there's evidence of a scoliosis, they would send them to a scoliosis specialist.